and thank you for checking in today. I'm Cindy D. Check with Queen Bee Creations, and we're gonna do um, a bunch of a bunch of things in this video because it's a thrift flip. And usually, what happens is when I get items from auction, or if I'm out thrifting, or from an estate sale, a lot of times they come in groupings, and I end up with items that aren't fine as is to sell in the shop they require a little bit of work a little bit of effort and so i put them into a bit of a pile until i get enough to um kind of justify putting my attention to them and then i do them kind of in a big lot and so on these thrift flip thrift flips i don't know why i'm so challenged in saying that but hey there you go um i bring you along so let me show you the pieces that we're going to be working with over today's video um, just to give you a bit of a heads up about where we're going. First up, because I keep putting my hands on it, I have this big honking board and it's pretty cool. Just, uh, you know, it's not a board to be used for anything other than decor. So we're going to be doing some stuff to zhuzh this up a little bit beyond how it is right now. Um, I have, I got a set of three of, you know, the ladle, the spatula, the whatever. We're gonna do something with the ladle today. Um, just to give a couple of ideas of some decor things that you can do even with, with weird things that you end up with. I don't like to let anything go, which sometimes is problematic from the standpoint of space in the shop, but you know, it is what it is. I got a set of, and so let me let me tell you, I mean, this wood board, I actually, um, it cost me $9. The ladle cost me $1.40 Canadian. Um, these three candlesticks, um, I actually got from a thrift store. Usually these are all super expensive. It's gotten crazy in the thrift stores around here. And I will end up seeing, you know, the small one is $7. This one is 10 and then this one's 15. And I'm kind of going for the set. That's crazy. I can't do anything with that. These were at the thrift store, 50% off. And I didn't even realize they were 50% off till I got to the cash. They were priced so reasonably. So all together, um, the candlestick trio cost me six dollars. Yeah, I would have paid six dollars for just that. So we're gonna do something with those. And I have um, some white candlesticks in the shop already. So I'm not gonna do these plain white. I also have this little planter, which is super cute with all of the little fruit. So we're gonna bring out the details in that. I have this. Um, little ceramic pair, which I loved, but um, it's kind of dirty and beat up and scratched. So can't sell it in the shop as is. It needs zhuzhing. So we're going to do that. Um, I got these two cute little frames and the glass in them, that black and gold is etched onto the glass. So we're gonna change out the scene, do a little bit. These aren't gonna take a lot to go into the shop, but they need a little. I have this little weather vane chicken. <laughs> we're gonna, well, I'm gonna unbend him right now. So straightening out his little directional arrow. And we're just going to kind of unwrap him, paint him up and just make him a little bit more, um, a little less kitschy and a little bit more in a style that will sell in my shop. And while we're on chickens, I have this big one. So again, not a color that's really going to work in my shop, but I love the big chicken look. And so we're gonna do something with him too. So that's where we're at with everything that we got on our plates. And so, what I'm going to start with, as I move things off to the side, um, I'm going to start with this guy because I want to get him sanded first. So I just want to get it smoothed out a little bit. It's got a little bit of a rough surface. I'm going to go take it over to my um, palm sander off to the side. Um, I'm going to do it off video. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start zhuzhing this up a little bit. It's not going to take 
a lot. So we're probably going to get this one done and out of the way before we start pulling out a lot of our paint to start working on some of our other, other items. So I'm going to go sand and I'll be right back. I've got the board just roughly sanded and um, just kind of smoothed out. I had a little bit of just kind of a rough texture. And before I do anything else to it, I'm actually going to stencil onto it. I don't want to paint it. I'm going to leave it the natural wood color, but I'm going to add a little bit to it. And to do that, I'm going to use two things. One, Dark and Decrepit by DIY. Now, this is a self-sealing um, product. You can use it as a stain, which is kind of like what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, we're going to stencil it. And I'm going to be using the Rooster Flower Stencil. Mm, not sure how you guys can see that. Um, from Jamie Ray Vintage. So... The difference is, is I'm going to kind of separate it. Now, here's the thing. These lines, the inset wood, they're not straight. So it, it, it could drive you crazy because if you're stenciling, um, you either have to choose to take them as straight or not. But then my stenciling goes over top of these. I'm going to use them as divider lines. So I am going to take the word rooster and put it up at the top. Then I'm going to drop the stencil down and just stencil the rooster in the center. And then I will drop it down again and just stencil in flower. So I have rooster, the rooster, and flower. Um, so I'm not using the whole stencil because it doesn't all fit. And... You know, I could take it as gospel and ignore those lines and just do the whole stencil on there, but visually those lines are there. And so I'm just going to use them and it's going to look like what it's going to look like, right? So I'm just going to kind of eyeball the top yeah. and let's, let's just start with the rooster because you guys can see that and then I can do the rest. Um outside of that. So the one thing with stenciling, and I have a stencil brush that I'm using, but you don't want to use a lot. So I'm dipping in and on my board, on my, on my paper, I am just kind of offloading. And here what I'm looking at is I'm using the S as kind of my center here and seeing roughly where I want my rooster. And the rooster is fairly detailed. So I am going to be kind of going slow because I want to get all of that detail. And this dark and decrepit will almost work as a bit of a stain, but because it's kind of that dark brown, we're not going to get, um, you know, I want some contrast, but it's not going to be a really huge in your face kind of thing. So you see what I mean when we're done. It's gonna look like, it's gonna look like a stain and not, not like a paint, which is perfect. And there we go. There's our rooster. So you can see it's gonna look almost like maybe it's wood burned in there, right? Um, but I like how it's going to be subtle. All right. That's the full board stenciled up. What I am going to do is I'm going to let this dry. This is really dry, thirsty wood. I want as much of the stain from my dark and decrepit to soak into the board as possible before I seal the whole board. So we're just going to put this off to the side. I'm going to let that dry and continue to soak up. I'm going to go wash off my brush and stencil very quickly and then we're moving on to the next project. This is the painting part of all of our projects and we've got a number of different paints out um, and really what I like to do is is do kind of all the painting at once so then I've got all the dirty brushes they're all done and I like to, as well, do similar things. So, 
meaning this, the first thing that we're gonna do is get rid of all of this stuff. Where's a, get all this, all this stuff off. We're not keeping that. And really what I can do is, there's a couple of staples down here at the base that is holding just all that wood in place. So I'm gonna pop those staples out as well because we're not gonna need. What I am going to do is, I'm just seeing if this comes out. I'm going to, I'm gonna make sure that I get that glued in. So I'm gonna use some hot glue and I'm gonna glue that down in or I'm gonna go grab my construction adhesive. And then we are going to paint the entire thing white. I'm gonna do it in beadboard. I'm gonna do front and back on this, even though we have a very definite front. I am gonna be doing some distressing on it, but, and, and so I don't mind some of the different colors coming through, but I want an overall cohesive look to it. So I am going to do it all in the beadboard. Right, so just grabbing a brush and I would expect with this, because I've got some dark colors like the green underlying this, that I'm gonna need two coats of beadboard for full coverage. So I'm gonna get the two coats on this and I'm gonna get a little bit of glue for the base, and then you will next see this little rooster. I keep calling him a chicken, but y'all are probably correcting me. It's probably a rooster here. Um, you'll next see him once he's got those two coats on him and he's ready for the next step. While I have my beadboard out, I have this board that is gonna be part of this craft, right? So I need it roughly painted white. I have not sanded it yet because I am gonna sand back the white. So I am gonna put on here, it's really rough on the edges. So I am gonna add some beadboard all over this, and then when I go to sand it back, I will expose a lot more of that wood. But while I'm working in one color of paint, I like to get everything that needs that color of paint done. And I think this is it for the white, um, apart from perhaps some white waxing, but I did wanna get this board done and drying. Now, unlike my rooster vein, um, this is probably this is only going to need the one coat because I am going to want to distress it back to the white. So, and I'm just using the same brush, even though I could have had a bigger brush for this project. But you can see all that texture of that board and I didn't sand it smooth because I want it to ultimately be nice and worn. So I'll bring back some of that texture when I do the sanding. For these next ones, what I do have is weathered wood from DIY. And I'm going to do my candlesticks and this, the base in weathered wood. And I just have a chip brush to do this because this, this uh, little pot and my candlesticks have a lot of detail. So we're gonna give it a coat of this weathered wood. Two, if I need it, I've thinned down my weathered wood a little bit only because it was pretty, um, it was kind of the bottom of that container it hadn't used in a while, so it was getting pretty thick. So. I might have to go and do a bit of a touch-up coat of this, but I really only expect it's like one full coat and then maybe a touch-up because I thinned it out. But 
I'm gonna get this done and all three of my candlesticks done in my weathered wood. All right, two more colors to go. This time we're using Farm Fresh by DIY. Oh, that one's a little bit stuck. Hopefully it's not dried up inside. Uh, maybe good to go. One of the nice things about DIY, because it's a clay-based paint, is that when it does get too thick in the bottom, and this one's doing okay, because I can see that I had added water to it um, to reconstitute it. So, it had originally dried out. I've added some water. It's had time to be sitting there soaking up the water. It probably needs a little bit more. So I will give that to it, add some more to it. Now this is obviously a very slick surface, this um, metal spoon. So it's gonna take a couple of coats, but trust me, this clay-based paint will ultimately stick to this. So that's one of the reasons I love this paint is that it will stick to my glass, my wood, obviously, to metal, whatever. So I'm gonna get on one very thin coat onto this, let it dry, and then I will add on additional coats. This first coat is gonna serve almost like a, giving it a little bit of tooth, right? It'll allow subsequent coats to stick. I mean, you could spend time um, sanding this to rough it up to make it stick even better, but this is gonna be a decor piece. I mean, people aren't gonna be walking around wielding this. We're gonna be attaching it onto, um, <laughs> we're gonna be attaching it onto wood and hanging it on the wall. So I'm not too worried about that. The other item that we're going to be painting out in our farm fresh is my little pear. And the only thing I wanna do is to avoid my metal leaves and stem, which we will be treating, but we'll be doing it after we've got this all painted. So this ceramic pair is a little bit slick. It's gonna take a couple of coats as well, but I'm gonna get that done before I bring you back for the next steps on the pair. All right, last thing that needs painting, or at least the last thing that needs its first coat of paint <laughs> is my big chicken. And for that, I am gonna be using cake batter from DIY. You know, one of the things to keep in mind is, is that sometimes, like if you've got a booth space or something like that, you want to create, um, you know, pieces that mix and match, but even subtle color changes can add a little bit of interest to your booth, right? This is a, this cake batter is kind of like this um, slightly yellowed, caramely sort of color. So I'm looking at kind of bringing in a little bit more of a soft kind of farmhouse kind of spring look to some of the items in the shop. But you'll notice that I'm doing a number of items in the same kind of color scheme so that, you know, you're looking at like the decor piece with the spoon and the pear, they're gonna be in the same base color of that Farm Fresh, which means if you were putting that into a booth for sale, you've got some items that are similar in tone that kind of go together. You can create a vignette with, or that create a little bit of a continuity of look without everything all having to be finished exactly alike. And so this item is gonna bring a slightly contrasting color but it's gonna go great with the greens, right? It's, it's not gonna have a problem with fitting in and um, kind of creating a bit of a cohesive look. So I'm just gonna get this guy coated. It's obviously gonna need um, at least two coats as well. It's a slick surface right now, so I'm just getting it on thinly which is why you can see a lot through it, but 
creating that slightly rougher surface for my next coat. All right, we have, this is the next day and, I, and I'm looking at my, my chicken here and it's got two coats of paint on it. I could do a third coat, but I'm just looking, thinking I am going to be white waxing this and there's not a lot of surface. I mean, there's a lot of surface that doesn't really have much of a, of a significant texture to it. So I'm thinking I'm going to add some. And to do that, I'm just gonna take my cake batter and I'm going to add some baking soda. Now, if you have salt wash, which is a product that you can purchase. This salt wash works perfect too. Um, but so does baking soda, which is a lot more accessible for me when I decide I want to do a textured design. I don't have to wait to get the salt wash in. But I've used salt wash before, love it. It's a great product. Um, Nothing wrong with baking soda. All right, so I'm just mixing enough baking soda to get kind of a texture that I want. You can do this very loosely. You can see it's fairly thick. I'm going to take um, a different brush than I was using before. I wanna use a chip brush so that I can just kind of dab this on all over that I can get a little bit more texture happening here and there. And I don't have to have it everywhere, but definitely spots where uh, maybe I have spots where the paint hasn't stuck so far, then this will go on and dry um, nice and solid. But places where I can add a little bit of detail and it's got a big body. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a big body um, without a lot happening. So I'm going to do this all over and get some texture on there and let it dry before we come back to the next step on this one. We had our two little gold frames. And with these, they just have little um, kind of plastic tabs here that you just simply pull out. All right, first one was simply. All right, and then the glass pops out. I'm gonna put this, the frames aside because we are going to be doing something with those later. But we have the glass which has this black and gold trim put on. Now, because I'm going to be lightening up those gold frames and I want to put um, something inside, I need to get rid of this black and gold. It's easy to do, but it's a little bit fiddly and it's messy. So all that you're going to do is put it down flat on a surface. You're going to take an X-Acto knife and you're going to take that X-Acto knife and lay it pretty much flat, just on its edge and you are going to run it along the edge. Now, once you get this started, it has a place to work from, and then it's better. But you are just going to kind of scrape it away. Now, you wanna make sure that your X-Acto knife stays um, on that kind of flat plane. You don't wanna be digging into the glass. We don't wanna be scratching the glass. We're just taking all of this black etching off the surface. And you can do this for any piece of glass. So sometimes I've gotten like big hutches and the top has all of this. Um, it looks like it's etching, but when you feel it, it's actually just kind of a surface paint onto it. So you can scrape that off. Not always easy and it's time consuming, but you can get rid of it if you want. So, you can see that I'm slowly 
taking off that block and then just take some um, window cleaner to be able to clean it all off, get rid of all of that, uh, that dust. And then you have, then you have this. You have a nice clean one. So I've already done one. I've got the other one to go. Um, the other thing that I did, so this is the piece I wanted you to be here helping me on, is the next piece that we're gonna do for this is I took the cardstock that was in there and I cut a piece of white paper. Now I happen to use photo paper. So I took photo paper and cut it down to the same size. And what I thought that I would do is take a couple, take a, an IOD transfer. So these are from the entomology and I cut out um, some butterflies. That might be a moth, but you're with me. <laughs> and what I thought I would do is just kind of center them on that photo paper. and transfer them onto it. So you're just gonna take the stick that came with the IOD package and you're going to, now I don't have the glass plate over here. I'm just doing this on a cardboard backing, do it straight on your table. I don't wanna risk pushing against the glass unnecessarily. And I'm just gonna transfer this on to my paper. So that in essence, this is going to give me my little design when I go to insert it back into the frame. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to put, do one more because I've got two pictures and I'm going to carry on getting rid of the black stuff. Um, I've got the frames set off to the side so they're ready for the final step on those. And I'm just going to have the pictures ready to go for when it's ready to go. Before we do our total finish on our pair, I just want to zhuzh up the metal. So it would be really hard to paint all of that and not get it onto the pair that I've just painted. So I'm just slipping a little bit of plastic wrap around there so that I can kind of get in and around and under without copper paint going everywhere. So I'm going to be using um, Pennies from Heaven, that copper patina from DIY. <gasps> oh my gosh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Small things that excite me. All right. And I am just going to Paint up the metal stem and little, you know, curlicue at the top and just to brighten them up a little bit before we seal up our farm fresh paint. So I'm just going to get these done, kind of scooch in underneath to get uh, the underside as well. Okay, even if nobody else knows. I know I did that and probably two coats because we want to do just a quick little quick little sanding on this so I'm not going to do a huge sanding but I do want to just kind of smooth out that paint, lightly distress it all, and get it ready to be sealed also. So I'm just going to be doing some sanding on it, revealing a little bit of those colors in below, right? So we'll get a little bit of sanding on this, and then it's ready for our final coat. So I'm just looking kind of going final coat, final coat, uh, final coat and assembly, final coats, final coats. Okay, we're all, we're almost there. Okay, it's time now to actually start finishing some of our projects. Um, the first one we're going to work on because it's all by its lonesome here 
is our big board. And for this, I'm actually going to be using, um, finishing it off with some hemp oil. And I have a big container here only because it fits my sponge in. And for this, because this is really dry, kind of thirsty wood, I'm just gonna be rubbing the hemp oil over the whole thing. And it's already pretty much soaked in. So, you know, with something like this, where you just have the plain wood, using a natural product like a hemp oil is a great way to be able to seal it. I mean, obviously, you know, if this was a board, um, like a cutting board, then make sure that you're using a food grade hemp oil. This is really just for display purposes. It's really not decide, it's designed to um, be cut on and it's not angled or lipped in any way to be like a big pizza board. It's just really um, a display piece. I don't have to worry about the hemp oil lifting any of my paint because we use the dark and decrepit from DIY and it is self-sealing. So really what we're looking at doing is putting on this oil and leaving it to sit and allowing it to soak in. But look how cute that is. So just a little bit of a, of a stencil on that one and it's good to go. Mm -hmm. Now, just because this is a really dry wood piece, I am going to apply some uh, hemp oil to the back, just as a, as a conditioner, right? And very often with some of my old pieces of furniture, I will do this on a lot of the interior so that it gets to drink all that in, even though I've maybe painted on the outside of the piece so okay super cute i love that let me just put that off to the side to dry stick my lid back on there done one done okay next let me just get a cloth to dry my hands a little bit next we are gonna go with clear wax so i'm gonna be using waxes from diy so this is the clear wax. So we are just going to be applying clear wax to this piece. And when I'm clear waxing, you can use a wax brush. You could use, I'm just using a chip brush that I use for wax. I have a different chip brush for each different color of wax. Um, but I also have wax brushes that I use on big pieces of furniture, or I just will take a, a clean, lint-free cloth and apply the wax, whatever gets it on. And so I'm gonna put this on, let it sit, and in about a half hour, I'll come back and just rub it down and give it a good, a good buff, but just get off any of the excess wax. But look how cute our little chicken is now, right? That's a chicken, right? Rooster? Okay, rooster vein. I think that we went through that. So, super cute little, little vein that's been updated. The other piece that I want to do clear wax on is this board. So, you'll recall that I did a quick paint paint job on it with the DIY bead board and I sanded it um, down. I told you I'd do that off camera and I did. So I've sanded it down and we're just getting some wax on to let that seal up. Put that off to the side because I still have to do more with that. And I'm just looking around me and I think that's it for my white wax, I mean for my, for my clear wax. Now what I have is I have white wax from DIY and a different brush. And now I'm going to white wax these pieces. 
So we had done the, the weathered wood on these, this, and on my set of candlesticks. And so for all these pieces, I am going to, again, use that chip brush because I want to get all that white wax down into those details. Let me just wipe that all back from the top here. And it's just gonna soften it all. Right? We're gonna lose some of the brightness of that color. It's just gonna be sitting down into the cracks. And if we rub this back and we end up getting some of the original um, cream color, because this was that lighter cream showing through, that's okay. That would look all right. So you can see already that it kind of highlights those details. And then we just want to do the base. And this has little cracks, little ridges in it. So I wanna make sure I get my wax down into that. Oh, cool. So we're going to do the same thing with each of our candlesticks as well. We're going to highlight the detail. We're going to get that wax down into it, and then we're going to wipe them back. I just want to show you the difference between the white wax and the non-white wax. You can see how it's pulled out a bunch of those details. Just, just for interest sake. One last little touch on these candlesticks before I call them done, is I'm gonna take some Golden Rule, which is a gold wax from DIY, and I am just going to highlight it. So on the tips of all these little, little pieces, there's a little tiny gold ball. I'm just gonna kind of brush it lightly and the same thing on all these little, little pieces coming up. Just a little bit of that gold wax and then let it dry along with the white wax. So it's gonna be very subtle. I'm not doing anything super bold, but it's just another element to add to the details. Just a little bit of accent on those details as we go. So that's a piece that I'm also doing, just so you know, uh, before I move on to the next piece. When it comes to our little pair, I wanna white wax this too. So I'm just going to take our plastic and kind of flip it up around everything that we did with copper, just so that we're not ending up white waxing the copper part. So we're just going to do the same thing, cover this with white wax and wipe it back. Next up for white waxing, mm, three more things. I was thinking it was only two, but it's three, is our ladle. So I just wanna get this white waxed, the entire piece white waxed, wipe down, and then just set it off to the side to dry. We've already got the base wood that we're gonna use clear wax, but I'm just gonna let this sit off to the side and dry before we come back and we finish it off. So it's still got more to go, but we're just getting it a little bit softer looking. Awesome, all right. Next up, we want, a gold, we want to white wax our gold frames. Now these are just a little bit brighter than I'm wanting uh, for our butterflies that we've done. 
So all that I'm gonna do is I'm going to white wax them, get that wax down. And again, you know, it's not gonna do much to the outside that's all smooth, but what it will do is kind of soften this a little bit because it's gonna allow us to have that white wax sitting down in all of the details. And we just wipe it back. So I want the, the gold to shine through on the highs, but it's going to soften it. And I'll show you the, the comparison of the two. you can see the difference right much bolder nothing wrong with bold but again it depends upon the look that you're after what's the project that you're doing this is this is where we're we're going to be putting our butterflies so all right you get the idea so let me put one of the butterflies in I'm kind of covered in wax so I, I don't want to Get totally crazy here. All right, there's one of our backers. And our glass. it all in under those plastic pieces and this is what it's gonna look like so cute I have to find the other plastic backings but that's our little frame just a little more on those edges all right so cute so We've got one frame left to go with the white wax and this big mamma jamma with the white wax. So we're going to cover this whole chicken in white wax and wipe it back also. So it's not going to be super yellow yellow but because we added that faux salt wash right we added that baking soda and paint layer we've got a lot more texture happening so that when I go to wipe back the white a lot more of the white is going to stay on our piece than would have otherwise and that's why I decided ultimately to add it was that it was too smooth and slick a surface and I would have had too much of the yellow showing and not enough kind of detail. I'm, I'm hoping that that texture will end up looking a little bit more like, you know, maybe some of the feathers as it goes. So I'm going to get this all covered and then wiped back. And I'll show you what it looks like after I get all of that wax on and off. All right. We are now looking at finishing this off. And I'm looking at adding, I mean, I could add a little bit of hanging hardware on the back, but because it already came with two holes, I was hoping that I'd be able to perhaps need a poker um yeah poke some jute through and yeah okay so what I'm looking at doing is leaving enough on the back that we can hang from just a little bit below the lip and then I'm just going to tie this off and we will deal with it after I just wanted to make sure that I did that 
futzing around from the back and everything before I attached my spoon. Because once this is on, it would be so much more awkward. Right? Okay. So, what I do have are two little furniture U nail things that I thought might work up at the top. I don't know. So we'll see how those go in. Kind of hard. I'm holding. Spin in at the same time as the nail. Okay, two. Here's the second one. Okay, that's actually holding it quite well. The other thing I want is just to bend the lip up just a little bit more. So let's see if we can turn that up. Awesome. Okay, so there we go. What I am going to do is take my hot glue gun and oh, let me get the other stuff first where did i put it here we did and a little bit of spanish moss so i have an idea for right now which you know we're kind of going into the easter season i have this little egg nest um, but I want to set it up in such a way that I'm going to glue the Spanish moss in so that that becomes part of the permanent display, but I'm going to nestle, I'm going to nestle the nest, <laughs> I'm going to put the nest in so it is temporary. So you can pop that out. You could pop in afterward, just like a, a nice flower. You could pop in, um, a little tea light. Don't light it if you got the moss, but you know, you could put a little candle in there you could pop in, I'm thinking um, a faux succulent, right? Would be super cute as part of a permanent little grouping. So, just wanna get some of that in and get my moss in. And then for now, we'll just tuck our little, look at how cute that nest is. Tuck our little nest in. And then I'm looking at wanting to unwind all of my, my jute threads here. There we go. Just a nice, cute, little, different display. Perfect maybe in a little kitchen with the, with the ladle and uh, just something a little bit more fun. So we have done, I can't remember how many things, maybe about seven different. So we've got our ladle, we've got our cute little pear in the same color tones, right? So we've got those that again if i was in a booth and i've got the same kind of color things happening this also coordinates because it's done in the same white as that board originally we have our cute little butterflies right from our iod entomology transfer and we have our candlestick set that also goes with our lovely little planting urn. And we have our big board and hanging out the back here, we've got our big chicken. 
So I hope that you got some ideas that you can use. Certainly share any of your thoughts and ideas with me. I'd love to hear them. As always, the paint, the products that I use, all the waxes, the transfers are available on the website, queenbeecreationshome.com. And I got lots of other things in store for you. So thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again. Until then, take care.